Well, welcome back to The Tammy Show. Today we're here at the Black Expo in Charleston, South Carolina, and I am pleased to introduce you to Mr. Terrence Williams, who is the Senior Vice President from Atl in Atlanta, Georgia, and he's here to tell us all about Nationwide and why they're here. How are you doing today? I am doing excellent. That's great. Great weather, good to be back in the low country. That's right, and you are a low country man. I am, I Wonderful, am. wonderful, yes. and so am I. So really, let's talk about what makes Nationwide sure. so unique. Absolutely. Nationwide is committed to doing business in communities and supporting communities. Uh, the expo here today is a great example of how we feel we can not only penetrate the community, but ensure that we're providing resources that are valuable to the folks that we do business with. So it's just a great opportunity. That's great. Well, you know, one of the things when you talk about the community, since right. Nationwide prides itself on the community, right. one of the questions I want to find sure. out from you, what are you doing to educate the consumers Absolutely. more about um, di diversifying Definitely. their personal um, insurances right. and their financial, you know, strategies, things Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. How much time do we have? Because there are a number of things <laughs> well, we're doing in that space. Right. Well, Just last year, that. the end of last year, we're actually brought to have a smiley to Charleston. Right. Uh, here in the marketplace, and we were on a, a nationwide tour that's aimed at addressing financial literacy. So we bring Tavis in, we conduct workshops with individuals, allowing them to learn how to take care of themselves, how to manage their expenses, their finances, how to provide for their families now and in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, today at the Expo, we're having a financial literacy seminar where one of our agents is conducting it, and he will go through much of the same material that we reviewed during the Tavis event. So we're doing a lot um, over a long period of time to ensure that we are conveying a message of education. It's important that we are able to get resources out that allow communities to help themselves. Exactly. Uh, so uh, we're really pleased with some of the things that are going on in that That's space. That's right. And you know, when you talk about financial strategies in this tough economic time, right. how is Nationwide holding up? Absolutely. That's one of the big things I know that folks would want to know. Very fair question. And Nationwide has, uh, has survived the uh, downturn that many of us have struggled through. As many organizations have, we went through some belt tightening in 2009, uh, but we've weathered the storm as we have for 75 plus years. So Nationwide still continues and maintains all of its ratings uh, from a financial standpoint, and we've weathered the storm and we are still there to take care of our customers. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you know, one of the other questions that comes to mind when you talk about consumers, we're right. concerned about privacy. Right. And I know that you're ranked number eight on that most yes. important pr privacy Absolutely. list. Talk about that. Absolutely. Protecting the privacy of our customers is something that's paramount for us. We have a host of, of uh, initiatives aimed at doing that. We mail data to individuals to ensure that they understand the processes that we take to protect themselves. Uh, as many organizations do, if you call into a nationwide call center, you have to go through a series of steps before we actually will communicate with you about your business with us. Uh, and we do a host of other things just to ensure that we're protecting our customers' privacy. And the ranking that you mentioned is something we're proud of. Exactly. Because a lot of organizations are struggling with that these days. How often do we see on the news where uh, a company was uh, something, someone was able to get inside a company right. and get financial data and then use that to their advantage? So we're actually proud of the fact that we do a pretty good job in that space. That's right. And one of the other things that I know that you're very proud about right. is your diversifying and inclusion sure. within your company. Absolutely. Talk about that because sure. you and I had a conversation before right. that about one of your senior VPs. Absolutely. Um, and how you really are very inclusive with all right. communities. Absolutely. Yeah, diversity and inclusion is, is not a, a strategy or a project with Nationwide. It's how we go to market. It's how we operate as a business entity. And we do this for several reasons, not only because it's the absolute right thing to do, but organizations that survive the long term have to ensure that they are inclusive of everyone. Our society is changing, it's evolving, demographics have shifted over the past several years. We recognize that we have to be inclusive and welcome all and anyone that wants to do business with us. With us. Not only do we have to ensure that we're doing business with the marketplace, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that our customer base, our employee base represents the markets we do business in. I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, where the population is, is heavily diverse. That's so right. we have to ensure that the folks that work for Nationwide in Atlanta look like Atlanta. Uh, as we do business in Columbia, South Carolina, we have to make sure that we represent the marketplace. So D&I, diversity and inclusion, is, is much, much more than a strategy or a project for us. Is how That's we do how business. You do business. One last question sure. for the skeptics out there that talk about in today's time, well, I don't want to pay the insurance, man. I don't want to give all my <laughs> money to the, to the insurance I've heard companies. That and they're taking <laughs> money from us. What do you say to Absolutely. that person? Because it's very important as we talk about diversifying right. your personal sure. finances, mm -hmm. your, you know, all of your personal insurances. Right. What do you say to that person? I say to that person that if they are comfortable 
assuming the risk on their own, then that's a decision that they have to make personally. But the business of insurance means that we share, we take in the dollars from many, share the risks, and pay those who have loss. So oftentimes, uh, friends and family who know I'm in this business, they <laughs> joke with me and say, well, wait, I've paid these premiums all these years, and I haven't received anything back. And what I say to them is that the dollars that we take in are paid out to individuals when they have losses or claims. Mm -hmm. Taking in those dollars enables us to ensure that we can put lives back together after a loss has occurred. And if you're uncomfortable assuming that risk on your own, you have to ensure that you have protection exactly. to ensure that, that if something does happen down the road, uh, someone is like nationwide is going to step in and protect you and ensure that you can get your life back together. That's right. So you heard it right here on the Tammy Show. Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Absolutely. Remember that. Well done. Listen. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much for the interview. It. Absolutely. And um, for folks out there nationwide, you can go to their website at www.nationwide.com. We'll be right back. Well, folks, we're here with Lamont Rucker uh, at the Black Expo here in Charleston, South Carolina, and I want to introduce you to him. All of you know him from Why Did I Get Married, the wonderful sheriff. How are you doing? I'm doing Thank great. Thank you so much for doing the interview. Well, listen, I want to talk to you about acting, because why did you choose acting as a career? You know what? It was a combination of things. I mean, I actually also believe that there's sometimes uh, certain things that choose you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a matter of you choosing to uh, to listen, you know, mm -hmm. and to uh, uh, obey the calling, so to speak, sometimes. So there were just certain things that, that fell in line for me. Uh, both of my parents are artists as well. I mean, everybody in the world is an artist. That's it's just right. a matter of what kind of creative spirit do you have. So. Uh, both of my parents identified in me uh, at a at a young age that you know that I had some talent and some interest. And again, I definitely got it honest from both of them. My father's a musician. My mother's a a dancer and actress uh, as well. And again, they're scholars and all the other things that they that's are. That's right. That's but, right. You know, they're that as well. So I remember ever since the day I was born. Matter of fact, my mother was pregnant with me and still still dancing. Still dancing. Yeah, so I I get it. I get you it. You get honest. it honestly, as they so, say. So. Um, uh, my, I was in junior high school, middle school, and I remember us um, m getting ready to move, and then my mom looking for, you know, looking at the other schools that were in the area, mm -hmm. um, and um, identified performing arts school, Duke Ellington School of the Arts, that's mm -hmm. in Georgetown in D.C., mm -hmm. and I brought back some information about the school and said, hey, if you're interested in kind of taking your, you know, your acting interest and some of the things and some of the potential that you we you've demonstrated mm -hmm. to the next level so to speak here's a place that you, you know, can do that that you can do that and the choice was mine really um, yeah and then i decided okay yeah i'll go for it i'll audition but i don't remember being super duper gung-ho about gung -ho. It or anything but really? at the same time i made a decision to go for it try it got in and as they say the you know the, the, the rest, rest, the rest, is, is, the history. rest is history but I, I i still had a numerous times where I still had other choices to make. Mm -hmm. I had a choice uh, to stay there. At one point I was getting ready to leave, considered leaving the school and doing some other things. Mm -hmm. um, in particular some of my athletic endeavors. The school wasn't really, isn't really an right. athletic powerhouse Oh no, at all. we know that. <laughs> so, you know, so then I had a choice to make. Am I going to kind of do that, do that? There were other schools that were very, very strong academically and I mm -hmm. wanted to do that. So, I mean, a lot of this is a combination of, like I said, it choosing me right. and me making some very specific, very conscious cho choices to, uh, you know, to pursue it and explore it. And as a young man, would you say that your parents were your inspiration for where you are now and what you're doing now? Absolutely. I think it always starts there. I mean, you can never underestimate the power of, you know, the family influence. And, I mean, parenting is the most important job in the world, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so absolutely, I always give my parents, you know, Their kudos props, that's and, right. and that proper love and respect. Mm -hmm. But just the same, as far as um, you know, actually using the word inspiration per se, mm -hmm. there were always a lot of other things. There were other things that I observed in the world, other things that I observed in my community, things that I observed in my school mm -hmm. or whatever. And I, I found that there was a there was a lot of a power in. Um, you know, in the written word and the spoken word and being able to use your body as an instrument. Right. And I just remember how free and how empowering that was, how um, how I learned I learned so much through the arts because the arts is really where like every Everything. other discipline exactly. kinda comes comes exactly. together. So 
it's your creative spirit as well as I mean I love math I love you know reading so all so much of what I know about history the history of the world is through reading plays right. knowing about all these other world cultures and world histories through the exploration of theater and mm -hmm. different creative you know creative forms right learning different music learning different languages learning whatever so and I, and I definitely don't know that I would know as much as I it's know you. as a person if I hadn't had the arts to kind of learn all of that through, right. you know what I mean? Right. So the inspiration was from the, from the thing itself, from yeah. the world itself, and from, you know, the, 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 the inspiration that I felt kind of from within, I guess you could say, yeah. having had that wonderful tool and that mechanism to, and also to just be just me. Be you. All That's I had to right. do was just be just me. Be I didn't true. really have to worry about fitting in and everything mm -hmm. a whole lot or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, I could just do just me. Just be you. Yeah. Well, you know, and one of the things, I am, and that was enough. as you're talking about this, um, it brings to mind about the business. You know, the business, this type of business can be very hard, it can be very challenging, and it can be very disappointing. Mm -hmm. What were some of those challenges and disappointments that you faced, or what's the high points? I'm asking you like three questions in one. Yeah, I mean, um, the highest points are, are yet to occur. Mm -hmm. Some of the lowest points are probably yet to occur, and that's the thing. You just got to be prepared for it all. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I remember, um, you know, uh, not getting certain roles. I mean, so you could say those are low points, but again, those are all the things you just take in stride. Mm -hmm. um, there's still roles and still stories that have yet to be told and, and things that I've yet to, to do and explore right. that I know are going to be the other things that I'm really looking forward right. to doing. When they happen, I'm going to be really excited. But, but I'm very excited at the way you know, things, things are have happening happened so right far. now. It's you know, being around and having young bucks like my man Doc Shaw that's here right. that's coming right. up right behind me and working, you know, having the opportunity. I know at some point in the future we'll work together okay. and, and just being involved in the community and uplifting other people. All kind of wonderful things that are still yet to happen. But... I've, I'm human just like anybody else, so I've got flaws, I've got vulnerabilities, I've experienced tragedy mm -hmm. and loss, and that's just life. So I just know real specific industry low point or that high point say. per se, okay. but you know, every time, I mean, life is full of failures and successes, and that's right. yeah, with everything, uh, and, and that's the eternal balance of it all. Right. So anytime anything quote unquote bad happens, it's really just an opportunity for something else for you to learn or for you to figure out, okay, now I know not to do that or <laughs> exactly. whatever it is. So exactly. and then all the wonderful things that happen are just that. The That's things right. that well, you appreciate for you know for what they what are and yeah and take the take the rest in stride. Well that the last yeah. question I want to ask you yeah. because you know they they want us to hire oh, I'm up. Sure. That's yeah, right. I'm being but, pulled left but, and right but we'll face But, but listen give, give you the, the advice that you would have young people, especially young men right now, especially young up. African American men, mm -hmm. what advice would you have for them? Okay. If they uh, want to go into the first business? thing, especially for our, our, our boys and for for our young people, it's it's be disciplined, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I would say three things. Be disciplined be patient and and uh, and get your education. I mean, education is definitely the access to everything. I know plenty of brilliant people. I know people who are very talented, but they don't have the tools that they need to mm -hmm. get where they want to go and where they need to go. They can't, they're not being able to provide for themselves. They're not able to really fulfill their, their destinies because they don't have the tools that they need to help them get where they really want to go. I know a lot of people who are only living in the now, they're not interested in making the investment in themselves for their future, and that comes with the investment in their education, uh, working, whatever, the character development. So having the patience to do the work That's that right. later on is going to pay dividends. And even at the time you're doing it, you might not know that it's paying dividends, That's but it right. is. You're building character, you're building a foundation, you're getting your education, you're developing your skill sets, all these kind of things that further down the line, you'll see that you've been gaining all this momentum that whole time and things will start falling in place That's and it's right. not it's not going to be by accident. So That's be right. patient, be disciplined, self-control, stay out of trouble, keep your tempers, you know, under yeah, control, yeah. keep your hands off these girls, That's stop right. fighting, right. you know, you know the criminal activity that sometimes, you know, really handcuffs mm -hmm. literally our boys and our young girls, you know, stay out of the system. You don't even want to be in the system. In the system. Stay right. out of the police right. precinct computer from, you know,